Hi, this is Charlie Calvert, and we're going to talk today a little bit about virtualization. In particular, we're going to take a product, uh, open source product, called VirtualBox, and we're going to install a copy of the Android x86 operating system on it. So right now we're running inside of Windows 7, and we're running a copy of VirtualBox. And here's VirtualBox, and you can download VirtualBox from the web. <clears throat> And uh, you can install it from www.virtualbox.org. You just click on the download section and uh, go ahead and download for your Windows box right here. Or if you want to have it for Linux or for the Mac, they support that. And, and for Solaris hosts also. And you go ahead and you download it. And then inside of that virtual machine created by VirtualBox, we are going to install the Android x86 operating system, which is a copy of the Android operating system, which usually runs on ARM architectures on your phones or your tablets. But here we're going to have it running on a PC inside a virtual machine. So we'll have Windows 7 running, and then we'll have another virtual machine inside of it, which will run a copy of Android x86. And in particular, at the Android x86 project, you would press the download button, you would scroll down, and we're going to download uh, a good choice right now in the history of the Android x86 project is Android x86 2.3, release candidate one, and we're going to grab the one that's for the Triple E PC. And we're going to, you can just click on the little view button here, and it'll allow you to save a copy of this ISO file. Um, here, actually, if you look further, you can see that here is right download VirtualBox here, VirtualBox version 4.16. Just get whatever the most recent one is, is again, get the most recent Android x86 2.3 copy that you can get. And these ISO files are really just uh, like a CD, but saved into a virtual file. Okay, so once you have that downloaded, then the next step is to go inside VirtualBox and create a new virtual machine. So you click new here, welcome to the new virtual machine wizard, you click next and you name your machine and we'll call this the uh, Android video. And we don't wanna, the operating system that we wanna install is Linux since that's what um, Android x86 is down below and we're gonna set it to Linux 2.6. Then we're gonna choose next and pick the size of, for the memory we want and why be why stand if you've got a big machine which we have right here why don't we take a, a a gig 1024 megabytes and we'll choose next here and we want to create a startup disk and we're going to create a new hard disk this will become a virtual hard drive as if we had a, another drive on our machine or another partition on our machine but we're going to make this be a virtual one that will reside inside a file we're going to choose the virtual box disk, disk image as the format. You can see there are other formats supported. And then we're going to have it be dynamically allocated, which means that it will grow as needed. And we're going to set it to the hard drive to be 8 gigabytes in size. And we're going to put it in this Android video file. So we're going to go ahead and create our Android video directory. And we're going to go ahead and create that. So now we've created a virtual machine, okay, and a virtual hard drive, but we haven't installed anything in it yet. So there's a number of things we can do at this point, but what I want to do is go to the settings section. And first we're going to go to the storage area, and we're going to add a new CD or DVD device, but in our particular choice, it's not going to be an actual hard drive, but rather a virtual hard drive. And we're going to go to our download section and we're going to go to the uh, Android area and here's the file that we downloaded and we're going to choose that as our uh, ID controller so it'll be as if there's a CD a DVD um, installed on here and it contains a copy of the Android operating system ready for us to install also in the settings section we're going to turn to the network area and we're going to switch it from NAT to bridged adapter. And we're going to um, choose not Intel, but PCNet Fast 3. These are the right choices, particularly if you're interested in um, <clears throat> being able to debug this uh, 
from Eclipse, but it's probably a nice choice anyhow. To make this work properly, you're going to need to have um, a, a DHCP server uh, on your network, which most people have as a result of their router for their wireless having that available for them. If you don't, go back to the NAT option, the one we had first, and then you won't be able to use it with Eclipse, but at least you would be able to get the virtual machine up. And right here, if you're interested, you've got a MAC address here, and it's a virtual MAC address, so you can put any number you want or rechange in any valid MAC address if you want. So we're, we're done with that now. So the next step now is to go ahead and run our um, virtual box. And it starts up, and because we'd already attached it to our virtual CD, to that ISO file, triple E ISO file that we downloaded, uh, it, the, uh, the virtual CD or DVD boots right up for us. And what we want to do is install the Android x86. If you wanted to, you could simply choose one of the first options and you'd launch right into the Android operating system, which is fine, but we'd actually like to install it here um, to the hard drive. And we're going to go ahead and choose that option. And now you can kind of, you can feel right away you're in a Linux install. And we're going to go ahead and do this, and it comes up to this very modern, well, let's face it, it looks like it's the 1980s here. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a new partition, and we're going to make it a primary partition. And we're going to take the default size, the 8 gig that we had, uh, we assigned to the size of the hard drive. In other words, we want the whole hard drive. And we're going to make this thing bootable since we want to boot an operating system here. Then we're going to use the arrow keys to move over here to write, and we're going to write this to disk. And it prompts us, are you sure you want to write this? And we just type in the word yes. And it's writing partition table to disk. And it takes a moment to go ahead and do that. And then when you're done, you have your um, partition. It's a virtual hard drive now on disk, and you can go ahead and quit out of here. Now the next step is to install Linux, install Android x86, and it's asking you where would you like to install it, and we'd say on SDA1, which is the partition we just created. So we go ahead and we press um, enter, and then it's asks us what format file system do you want, and we're going to choose ext3, which is a uh, file system that runs on Linux, similar to um, FAT or NTFS on the Windows, and it says you choose all you will lose all data. It's telling you it's going to wipe out the partition, and we say we know that. And then it goes ahead and does the uh, formatting of the partition, which can take a minute. When it's done, it asks you, do you want to install the bootloader grub? And we say yes, we would in fact like to install the bootloader grub. So that's our particular choice here, would be to install it. And so it says, and do you want to install system directories, read, write? It's really okay to choose no there, but I somewhat like to, uh, to go ahead and choose yes. And this process can take a little while. And then when you're done, it says that the Android x86 is installed successfully. And we could go ahead and run Android now, but um, it might make more sense actually for us to uh, create a fake SD card. Again, this is optional. You wouldn't have to do this, but let's go ahead and do that. I, I would like it to have the SD card. I think it's nice to have a little something we can write to there. And it's going ahead and create one, as you can see, at partic a particular size for us. And again, that takes a moment. And when you were done, it says the fake SD card is created. Would you like to reboot? And you can, in fact, go along with that and just go ahead and reboot. And it has a little one second countdown and then it reboots. And I just do that to make sure everything completed clearly. And then what it's doing now is it boots you back up into the uh, CD. So that's not quite what we want. So I usually choose close and uh, shut everything down. And I come into here, I choose settings again on the virtual machine. And I turn once again back to the storage page and then I remove that virtual CD, the Triple E, um, ASUS, uh, PC card, uh, ISO file that we downloaded from the website. And uh, so now this next time when we double click here, it boots up, but instead of booting onto the CD, it boots onto our hard drive that we just created. 
and we can choose the first of these three options here for the high DPI. <clears throat> you can choose whichever resolution you want here. And it says it's detecting the Android x86, and it will find it after a second. Then, then it's saying, oh, we're not really on an ASUS uh, triple E PC, which is fine. It's just letting you know. And then it takes you to this command prompt, which you can always get back to by parsing Alt F1, and you can leave by pressing um, Alt F7. And uh, then after a moment, and it takes a little while to boot up the very, especially the first time. Um, once you've booted it up one time, it doesn't take very long. But now here's an operating system booting up inside a virtual machine so that we're having a copy of the Android operating system that runs on an Android phone or runs on an Android top tablet running inside of a virtual machine. Now here's actually a fairly tricky point. It's getting the mouse to work inside the operating system once it boots up. You press right control I. Do you see at the very bottom right hand corner of the virtual machine, it shows says right control. That's telling you that that's the hot key. I press control I. And then if I click in here, I can sometimes get a little bit of control over the mouse. And it doesn't always work as well as I'd like. But usually after a try or two, you can get it to work. Then you can click on the menu here, and you'll see that you're actually able to choose uh, applications that are running. You're actually working inside the, the machine here. And um, you can also see that this little icon up in the upper right-hand corner means you're on the web. So if you click on the browser, you should be able to actually begin uh, browsing around. And you can see we go to a website here, or if we want to go to Google, we can uh, go to Google. So you're actually up and running. You've installed Android inside of the uh, virtual box here. And you've got two operating systems running at once, Windows and um, the virtual machine. So and if you want to get out of that virtual machine, you can press Control-I, which will get you out. So that's all I wanted to show you there. Thanks for uh, tuning in. This has been Charlie Calvert. We've done a little video showing how to uh, install Android x86 onto a Windows machine. Remember, you can install it. You can run VirtualBox on Linux or on a Mac, so you can install it on any of those places. Good experience starting to learn uh, a little bit about virtual machines, which play such a huge role in cloud computing and such a huge role in mobile uh, device computing. All right. Thank you very much. Bye now.